Hi there. Take a good look. I'm super psyched about today's episode. It truly is indeed hot. Just got hotter. You want to know why I'm super psyched about today's episode? I'll tell you in a bit. From the brand that is so dedicated to flavor and co-sponsored by Costaris Motos and Kenwood, this is the Nor Taste Quest, and I'm your host, Manny. Let's not forget, every week on Nor Taste Quest, our contestants have to pit their culinary prowess against one another to discover the Nor Taste Quest champion and earn the bragging rights as Nigeria's culinary best. Now, from last week, we said a big goodbye, adios, au revoir, to one of our contestants, Chineze. Chineze, I'm so sorry you allowed your ingredients to defeat you. Before you even started cooking, you were confused. Chineze got so flailed by the combined team of cashew nuts, pumpkins, carrots, beetroots, aubergine, zucchini, ginger. Plenty, though. Sounds like a huge combo of ingredients, I know, but not to those who know the onions. With the experience I've had in KTQ, I'll take it along with me, try to improve in my cooking skills, try not to get nervous like the judge told me, so that when I come next or in any competition, I can beat the contestant. Then I'll move on with my life, like I always do, carry on with my business and all that. Still from last week though, Moses, Wandu and Victor, they almost got the boot. As a matter of fact, they got stumped by the task and the ingredients and find themselves on probation. That simply means if you happen to fall for any reason in the bottom three or in a team that loses next week, you are out. So if the three of you are in the bottom three, all three of you are out. The sound of good news, hooray! These guys are safe because today is our cooking 101 episode. Forget all you think you know. Let our judges take you through all the ingredients we've experienced in this season. Let's meet our culinary maestros, starting off with our executive chef, Dr. Roberts. And our sous chef, Chef Franks. And our second sous chef, Chef Rene. What a sight to see our judges in chef jackets. Spicy. It's guaranteed to be an electrifying time. It's hot, just got hotter. It's not his quest after the break. Welcome back to Nor Taste Quest, the search for Nigeria's culinary best. And it's time. Let's meet our contestants. Guys, come on in. Hi, guys. Hello. I'm not too sure about you, though. Are you ready for today? Yes, we are. And today, we get to see the experts at work. I'm curious. Dr. Robert. Tell us about today's episode. 14 people became 10 very quickly, and 10 is liable to become 7 if we don't arrest the bleeding rapidly. You all had so much promise, seemed to be able to do so much, and simple ingredients seem to be tackling you instead of you tackling the ingredients. Today we're going to work with you, show you a few tips to hopefully help you all next week, especially the three of you on probation. I would hate to see 10 become seven so quickly. The big guns are out. If I were you, I would follow their blazing trail carefully. I will. More to come right after this timeout. My new knock 
cubes are here. And the flavor is three times meatier. Three times? Yes. Fuck. I can't wait to start cooking. Joyce, what special flavor do you put in your stew? And how come you're always having so many customers? It's the new nut cube, so. No? The new nut cube's flavor is not three times meatier. Taste some. Mm, I think I'll have some more. Taste the nor difference. Now with three times meatier flavor. Welcome back to Nor Taste Quest. Let the show begin. We're back again into our kitchen where everything started and where it should all end. We're going to take you through a few simple, basic, everyday things. I will start by telling you a few kitchen do's and don'ts which we have observed that you all have continuously done wrong whilst in the kitchen. And then Chef René and Chef Fregonet will do some other basic things, knife skills and other things that we find that you guys are not able to do and do properly. First and foremost, when you go to your kitchen, any kitchen that you're in, hygiene is probably one of the most important things that you need to consider. You have to wash your hands, keep your hands clean, and keep everything that you're working with clean. In any kitchen, you have boards to use. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Matt. You have boards that are of different colors. When you have boards that are color co coordinated, you try to make sure each board is used for a specific thing. We use the red board for raw meats, in most cases also for raw fish. You use your green board for baked goods, dry goods, or cooked goods. As Chef Renee likes to say, she prefers to use her blue board for cooked meats, like raw cuts or um, smoked meats and stuff like that, you're gonna cut it, you're not gonna cook again. Your green board, it's green, we use for your vegetables and other things like that. And your white board would be used for breads, bits and pieces and whatnot. And your yellow board used for fruit. Very simple, they have the colors you can follow. Now if you decide in your kitchen to, to say to yourself, I'm going to use the red board for baked goods, that's fine as long as it sticks with, for that purpose. The color is just to make a bit of sense. Red is meat, green is vegetables, white is breads and stuff like that. It makes it easy for you to remember. Very important for you all to remember, and even for our viewers at home, when you're handling your meat products, do not take a cooked piece of meat and place it in the same container or vessel with a raw piece of meat when you're not going to cook that piece of meat again. We saw that happen with you all in many instances. Especially meats like chicken and things like that, that will cost you anything from salmonella to, you, you name it. That's the first part of food poison that's going to happen to you. You have your towels. Most of you use hand towel, you use the hand towel as a dish towel, you use the dish towel as a hand towel. Usually when you wash your hands, your hands are not completely clean, so you end up drying them in your hand towel. You should always have a towel that you use for your dishes, and then a towel used to wipe the table and stuff like that. If you have these basic principles in mind, it would always help you. The other thing that we find that you all continuously were unable to do was to plan yourself. Write down what you have to do before you start to do it. That way, you will never run into tr trouble. You won't forget things, you won't leave an item out, you're having a dinner party, you want to cook fish, and at the end of the day, the fish is still in the freezer. So we are going to do everything and follow step by step. Write things down, make a note of what you want to do, go through it, and decide what has to be done. Knives. Sharp objects, we saw you guys taking the knives and running, running in the kitchen and waving knives around. I don't want to get butchered. And I know that you guys don't want to either. So very importantly, hold your knives down 
away from other people when you're walking and don't even run with a knife, period. They are very sharp. You all saw that when you had your first skill test and they will cut you and they will cut other people. Electric cords. You are using the blenders with your wet hands and pulling from the cord. Always pull a plug from the socket, from the head of the plug and with dry hands. You don't want to electrocute yourself in the kitchen. Very, 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 very importantly. Today we'll follow some basic recipes. I want you all to be able to take any recipe from the internet, from a recipe book and follow it. Chef Rene is going to do some simple stuff that you guys could not do the other day, which is cook jollof rice using a Kenwood rice cooker. Chef Rene. Thank you very much, Doctor. Okay, so today, like Doctor said, we're going to make the rice in the Kenwood rice cooker. Um, all the ingredients are going to go in there at once and I'm going to leave it alone and go do other stuff. I saw some of you check in back and forth, not allowing the rice cooker to do its job by steaming up the rice. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put the rice in there and I'm going to go do everything else I need to do. It has a warm button. Once the rice is done from the cook button, it goes to warm and it keeps it warm. So even if I come back after two hours and I want to plate my food, it's still warm and mullable for me to do what I want to do, okay? I'm going to need um, eight medium tomatoes, four big peppers, and four um, she needs it. small hot peppers. Tomatoes? What else do you need, onions? Yes, and two onions. Chef Rene, the tatashi, are you putting the seeds in too? Yes. All oh, goes wow. in. Wow. Okay. Nice. All goes in. Okay. Because you need that, um, that heat. So that makes it very easy at the end of the day. You don't have to start yes. seeding the peppers yes. and everything possible. Absolutely. So you want to make sure you remove the stems, of course. I don't have to teach you how to handle your peppers. Now, for me, when I want to use a blender, I make sure I cut my um, peppers into smaller sizes so that the blender gets them quicker, okay? I don't just throw them in whole. Can I get my onions, please? Obviously, onions are different sizes and whatnot, so it, the recipe is just a guide. Am I correct, Chef Renee? Yes, absolutely, but these are medium-sized onions, so they'll do. It's a guide for you to be able to then, you can tweak it, add more stuff to it. If the rice is too soft for you, you can make it less water. For, it's all about adapting the recipe to suit yourself. It even looks good already. Yeah, good. Yeah, good, thank you. Now my hands are all dirty. Before I touch anything, I'm going to wash. It's a very simple recipe. Two cups of rice four medium-sized tomatoes, two big red peppers, two scotch bonnet peppers, one medium-sized size onion, two knorr cubes, half of teaspoon water. of salt, a third cup vegetable oil, and one mm -hmm. cup water as needed. Mm -hmm. Now, it's she's more. doubled the recipe. That's the reason why you have it and everything else. So there's enough for all of us to taste. So now that all of this is done... Chef Rene, what is that you're taking off the, the rice cooker? Now this is the steamer for the Kenwood rice cooker. Now this helps you if you want to cook your rice and at the same time um, steam your vegetables and whatever it is that accompanies your food, fish or whatever you have that you want to steam. It goes right there, two in one. Great job, it does, okay? But we don't need this now, so I'm going to take it off. Okay, this is ready. I need to measure up my oil. Okay, I'm going to use a blend of oil and of course blue band margarine. Okay. So this is half a cup. Okay, I'm going to do about half of that. It's not going to be full. There you go.
No, it's not on yet. It's not on yet. You can see that. So, so in goes the pepper. Um, we're going to get our no cubes, two. And this is nor chicken, okay? So, squeeze it in there. Now, the reason why I'm doing all this once again is so that I don't keep going back and forth to check um, the, the rice and then letting all the steam out from the rice cooker and not allowing my food get nice and fluffy, okay? So what you're saying is that I can, I can put the rice in the rice cooker, put the rice cooker on and go and watch Knorte's Quest on TV. Absolutely. Excellent. So now I'm ready for my rice, okay? And because of the kind of rice that it is, you don't want to, it's not a local rice, so you don't want to go and wash out all the starch, it doesn't... But even with the local rice, you don't have to wash out all the starch. That's the myth that everybody feels you have to wash the rice and you're washing clothes and whatnot, you know? Exactly. Now I'm going to, now, because I didn't stir it all along, now I'm going to stir it up a little bit just you to see how, how it sits in there. So this allows me to know what consistency, how much more water I'm going to put in there. Mm -hmm. So this is half a cup. Um, about half of that, half a cup again. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So, we stir it up together again, just to be sure that everything is in well incorporated in there. The butter is going to melt once the um, machine comes on. Use any salt? Actually, no. I have used only knorr because that's the only season that I think I need. But at the end of the thing of the meal, if the rice is done, and I go to check it. If I need a little bit of salt, I can just put in a little bit of salt and then fluff, it, fluff all it all together. All right, so now everything's all set in here. Everybody can see? It's, it's on. on. You see, it's on to cook. So we're on cook. So we, we leave it. Yeah, and we do something else. And we do something else. I'm going to go wash my hands, play my station, make sure everything's okay. Now, right? I, you know, I, I understand you guys work under pressure. But look at her workstation. It's not all messed up and stuff, you know. And that was one, two, three, pesto. And it was done. Okay, let's move over to the other end of, of, of the kitchen and we'll, we'll let Chef Fregs thrill you all with some knife skills. Now, um, just knife skills. I know everybody's trying to, you know, cut like a chef. And I'll just show you some secret. I know sometimes you're afraid of cutting your fingers. When you want to chop an onion finely, you don't just slice it and go all crazy on it. The onion already has natural lines for you to follow. Natu you, can, we, you can all see the, those lines, right? And you want to go from the smallest part to the biggest. Now, when you're chopping anything and you want to chop something finely, you need to protect yourself. And by doing that, you need to put your hand like, a, like an eagle's claw or a bird's claw. And you want to cause against this grain of your finger. Can everyone see? Thank you very much. You cut against the grain of your finger. So, that way you could go follow the natural lines. And when you're following the natural lines, you don't want to cut all the way because you don't want it to fall apart, right? So you follow the lines as thinly as you can. When you get to the point where it feels like you're not comfortable anymore, you don't have any more grip, you grab you, and just keep going. Then when you're done, you hold again, and you cut in, but not all the way through. You do that about two times, three times. Then you hold, you cut, and you cut. Okay. Can you all see how those are so evenly cut. Nicely cut and evenly cut. How do you know when not to move? How do I know when not to move? When not to move your hand? How do you know when you got to When you just get uncomfortable. So I'm listening to you. I'm listening to you. 
Go on, keep asking me. She's afraid. Scared for him. Uh-uh. Keep talking. Where did you learn how to chop? I'm listening to you. Yeah. How long have you chopping? It's just, it's just. Do you know? It's just safety. I'm following this. That's what I'm following. It's not because I am calculating, but I know that the knife is running against there, so I know I won't cut myself. You have to, I'm sorry to use that word, you have to think like a blind person. Know your way around the kitchen. kitchen. Know your knives, know your cooker, know everything that belongs to your kitchen as though you are blind. That way you can chop and watch TV at the same time. So that's why, let me do another method. So if I'm just going, so it's always going against, so I'm not going to, it's, it's grinding against here. Then another chopping skill you want to learn is you have to rock your knife back and forth. So that way you slice and you're not going to allow your life knife bend and in, you know injure yourself. So you see, we have a really fine cut here. We have some thin slices here. So like Doc has said, if you think like you don't have any sight, you can, but if you follow the motion, I was following the grain of my hand, and everything was perfect. So uh, I'm going to chop up some bell peppers. With this bell peppers, I would prefer you cut at the bottom, pop out the seeds, and even with your fingers, you could take out the white pith. Why do you take out the white pith? It, it's bitter. It's bitter. This is a really sweet pepper, but I mean, life is about yin and yang, so even from here, you can just take out the seeds or you slice. You always cut away from you. I'm sorry. Now, when you want to finely chop a pepper, you could just look for where it's hard the most. So if you do it like that, or So you, I want you, um, Doom, to do me a fine brunoise. A brunoise is like what we just did, a really, really, really fine chop. Because the bell pepper is a bit, you know, it's really de delicate and it's not like the onion. So you can take your time with this. So everything, same size cubes. At the end of the day, you have same size cubes. Can you imagine if Chef Frex was in that room with you guys chopping peppers? You wouldn't have stood a chance. It's all about the skills that you harness and how you use your knives. All right, so, liver, liver, liver. So liver, um, Chinelo, the other time you parboiled it, then boiled it. So I'm gonna cut some into a strip into strips, sorry. Then I'm going to cut some, into, uh, cut some into a steak. Now, when you're thinking stir fry, everything has to be relatively the same size because you want everything to cook at the same time. So a stir fry, what's a stir fry again? When high heat, yeah. little oil, oil, fry, 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 yeah. toss everything together. So for the stir fry, I'm going to just do some fairly thin strips because I want everything to cook in time. You can see it's quite thin. So, keep. Now you see I've gone for this fingerling size. So you can see now it's tall, this is longer. So what I can do is cut it in half and keep going. So, okay, that's too thin now. You can see? And, and if you are cooking, the, 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 the pressure. Not, exactly. not, not so, not so much, much, but a little so bit. Much so much just enough to hold the meat in yeah. place and then okay. cut. Sh show them okay. this. Let's so we can even let the viewers at home see. So see, how, see how that is so perfectly cut. So you, what you want to do is, like you said, put, get the mark you want and just go. Not too much pressure. Not too okay. much pressure. For those of you afraid to get your fingers dirty, the kitchen is the wrong place for you. Now, in the kitchen competition, 40 minutes, no time. You're using, you want to cut another piece of meat. Flip. Now, steak. Steak has been, I've told some people who went home thinking, why do we have steak again? There's something no one did, and I want to, I want to just give you a small expo. 
like they would say. There's a meat grinder in your pantry or with a knife. Just making mincemeat. Making mincemeat. I, I was waiting for someone to say this. So you just keep rocking, there you go. chopping. Now by chopping the meat and mincing it, you're breaking down the fibers. So if I were you, that's what I would have done. And I've made it into a nice, and well, I'm still making it into a mint. This way, your meat cannot be tough. So this, I mean, a meatball fried up, you make it into a sauce, it's ready to go. So these are the minute steaks, and we have one more steak that you're going okay. to deal with later. Okay. okay. Anything else to chop up? I think we're uh, done yes. for the moment. We're done, we're done for now. It's on now. Lots of culinary education going on in the kitchen. Are we ready? Labade gave us a salad with lemon juice as the dressing and a lot of lemon juice as that. And Pupola did his own, the lemon juice and, 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 and the, the, the rind inside yeah. his, yeah. You guys, come on. So we're gonna do a very basic recipe today for a salad dressing. Using all the ingredients that you had before, some honey, some lemon, black pepper, and salt, and a bit of knorr. Six tablespoons of olive oil, three tablespoons lemon juice, one tablespoon honey, fresh black pepper to taste, sea salt to taste, and Knorr Classic also to taste. All ingredients together, whisk them, and pesto. In how many minutes? Less than two. Less than a minute. You have salad dressing that costs you next to nothing. All right, so like he's told you, Give me a guideline of the recipe. So here, in goes in our olive oil. Now, the recipe, like we told you earlier, is a guideline. It's really just a guideline. But what you really want, you want oil, acid, sweetness to balance it out, and seasoning. That is what your dressing should taste like. Next time, we're using honey today. The other dressing could be raspberry ju um, juice. It could be sugar. It could be anything, anything that you want. But just so that it balances out. So that's about a tablespoon of honey, three tablespoons, lemon juice. I like my dressings really sharp. If I wasn't following this recipe, I would, which I'm going to cheat and do, and put a bit extra. Black pepper. Never use black pepper powder. Never, ever, ever. If you're at home and you want to buy black pepper, buy it whole, or I put the whole peppercorns in a meal like this, or have a spice grinder at home. Or any, use the smaller, big, the smaller end of your blender. Of your attachment blender. of your Kenwood blender. Okay. So some black pepper to taste. Some salt. Sea salt is better as well. But if you just have regular salt, that's fine. And also, don't forget to add a pinch of Knorr Classic. I would like to jazz up this dressing a bit with a touch of parsley. 
So, very finely chopped. Now, you don't want to over chop herbs. The minute it starts to bleed on the board, it's more or less useless. What so, does bleed on the board mean? What's that the color? Fantastic. On the board, there you go. When the juices start to run out. There you go. Sometimes it's okay to cut like herbs on a whiteboard so that you can see, oh, is it bleeding yet? And you know, you, could, you can tell if it's stained. So you don't want to, and like we said earlier on, even if you've color coded, just make sure that if you're using this for herbs, you're using this for herbs. You couldn't get a salad dressing better than this. Truly and good. Olabade gave us fresh lemon juice on a salad. Please, can we have a, can we have tasting spoon? Let them all taste. Who wants to try? Everybody. Don't, don't take too much because we still need that later on in, 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 in our... It's not soup, just taste. <laughs> just taste. But you have to taste it with everything. No, 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 no. You can't do it that way. You need to taste. It, it has to have every, all the components together. To... Okay. Very balanced, very simple, very straightforward. Yes. Let's move to the next station. You have your liver here. We've added a bit of quinoa already, a bit of salt and some black pepper. Let me get the sea salt and the black pepper. And if you notice, we have only used knorr all day today. A bit of oil in your frying pan. So, touch your oil in this. You're not doing any parboiling, pre-cooking, you know, it's liver. All right. No, for duck. There you go. There that you means go. you're and, 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 and you hear, you hear, you hear that, sizz, that, that sizzling. Go again. This, and then there's another thing about cooking meat. Let it be. If you were sleeping, you wouldn't want anybody just touching. Let it be. Let it cook. Let it do what it's supposed to do. See people going all over and. So you want it to no, kind of you want to caramelize and have a good sear at the bottom. To sear something means high heat, hot oil, short period, seals in that flavor. You get that nice brown color. Because mm -hmm. if you, and again, if if your pan is really hot, it can take, but still don't try to overcrowd your, your pan, pan depending on what you're cooking. Because that way it will set, it will bring down the temperature too much too and you long, start too steam. Long, too long, too long. So you want to, you want to check it. It's not, I mean, some, some parts, because the pan is kind of crowded, you can see, but some of them are getting nicely brown like that. Look at that. It's a nice brown You could even leave it just until Get the edges, like even the beginning, the edges I'll of the upper part now. is beginning Even if to... it cooks from the bottom up, you flip it once for a second and you take it out. If you ask me, I will ask my humble chef to take take it, it out. I'm the taking the it out now. now. Taking it out of the pan now. Because now. we're still going to... Because it's, we're still going to stir the, fry. The and this, and the, the, you guys, that was all of 45 seconds. Did and that steak time? is cooked. We're going to use that same frying pan, a little bit of oil, very, just, very, a touch. just a touch, because it's already full of oil, that's perfect. And we're going to use bell peppers. Where are my bell peppers? We have some here, we have some here, some onions, and some hot pepper. Throw them into the frying pan. Yeah, throw the onions and pepper first. Yeah. yeah. Throw the onions. No, not all, not all. Not all. That's good. Some hot pepper. Okay. Please, can you teach us how to... But look at what now, he's doing. Now, now, what you need to do is you, you, you push the pan forward. The minute it gets forward, you bring it back. It's a recoiling action. It's a recoiling like a recoiling action. recoiling action like that. Okay. So, you put some green. I guess some red. Any red cut? Just some. Add some liter for good color. This is crunchy. Mm -hmm. And it's going to stir fry these to the little crunchy and it's going to add, add the, the liver. liver and, and that liver is now sitting in its juices. You would like to call it blood, yes, yes. but it's, it's sitting in its juices and that's going to help you make a bit of a sauce for that. You smell it, it's, it has that earthy, like nutty flavor. You can smell it. The, the, the powder one doesn't have that. Does that look so, good or what? This is looking good. It's ready to play. It's finished. It's ready Believe to it play. or not, it, it is cooked. The liver is Where's ready. It, it's not, it's not, it's succulent. We're going to do the steak quickly. So you see immediately this is 
so appealing to look at and obviously taste done. That didn't take any time at all, any time. It smells good, it looks good, and the liver is succulent. Now remember, there's no curry, there's no thyme, there's no uh-uh. It's just gnor it and simple, black pepper. Uh, and, and, simple, and keep it simple. Yeah. Hey guys. Yeah. All right, okay. so we're gonna go to the next other station. Very quickly, we're going to do the, the salad things together. They've already been cut, and then we're going to do the steak. We've cut the romaine lettuce. <laughs> In different, in different shapes and sizes to give texture and uh, layers on the plate. Now I'm going to add some blue band. We added some blue band now. Why are you running away? Run away. The blue band is going to give you more flavor. Just, no, 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 just, just a salad. Could you just do a bit more as well? Moses, I need you to take the thing from Chef Fregene and act as though you're not afraid of... So you grab this now. Just take it hey, off. Hey! No, don't press it. Don't listen to instructions. Okay. Now, you don't need to press it so much. You see, can we, can we have a look at that? Yeah. How nice and brown that is. All right, okay. So that is hot. Now, could you put some onions? We're going to make another quick stir fry here. So some onions here, put that in. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine. And a touch of ginger. A touch, a touch, half of yeah, that, that, that's fine. Greg, what else goes in your So salad? allow that saute. Then okay. there's a bit of... Uh, 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 uh. So he showed you the action. Oh, okay. Now you're moving it back and forth. Yes, the recoil action. That's it, that's it, you're getting it. So. Now, you see the difference between mine and yours? Yours is kind of big. So can we have some of the green peppers? No, on a high heat. The heat needs to be high. No, the chopped ones. So I like to get really hot again and you add the beef. The beef is seasoned with knorr, as you can see. And I'm going to put in a bit of black pepper as well. So the oil is really hot. You can put the beef and the garlic. Mix it, mix it together for us. There you go. Good now, stuff. with the garlic, you don't put garlic in fresh because it's going to burn. So you put it where you have some some more things in the pan. All right, so for the salad, we're going to also put some green pepper on here. We're going to take some... Look at you, but so they can see. We're going to take some cashews or some crunch. Comsa. Can I have some red bell peppers there? We have some parsley make it look pretty on the plate. And you must always think of color on the plate. You see how three strands of bell pepper has just yeah. elevated that dish. For those of you who didn't see how this was done that were in the other group, this was grated with the... It was shaved. Shaved with the... Yeah. Yeah. Um, Can I have a spoon? I did a peeler. Now you see, now you're going to make the plate messy. Dirty. But it's fine. One second. Everybody can see? Quick and easy as well. And if you look at the pieces of meat, they are succulent, they are whole, and they are the tender. What's vegetables. most important. Okay, any questions before we move on? We have got all our stuff together. It's now time to plate. We have all our ingredients ready. We have all our stuff been cooked. Everything is set to go. It's now to make the eye eat before the plating. Chef Rex, what direction will you normally take when you're plating food? Are we plating food? I always just think proportions, odd numbers go well together, three, two, you know, placing, playing with odd and even numbers on the plate. You have to think of color. I like thinking of height as well because you want the food to kind of reach out to the person and you just always want to think of proportions. The meat is what size, the side dish is what size and you always have to think of, you know, sauce and the sauce guy. You know, is there a drizzle that will go nice on the plate? Is there a little... Sometimes I see people try to do spoons and things. Sometimes it's not necessary, so just think of things like that. Okay. Okay. Before, before, before you do anything, let me just show you guys something very quickly. These are two plates of salad, plated. And it's so obvious which one looks nicer. The one on the left-hand side, the same amount of salad leaves, but they have been lifted up to look so inviting. 
When he said height, that is what he's referring to. Thank you. Go ahead. So um, I'm just going to get a few of these cucumbers that I had them slice for me earlier. They're thin, okay. nicely thin, so that even when you go to eat them, it's easy to, to eat, to take and eat. Okay? So you just want to put them around like that, like so, like a bed for the rice to um, sort of sit on top of. And also what we're taking advantage of here is color, okay? The contrast of the green would go very, very well with the rice when we put it on top of it, okay? So, you want to take, yeah, I need a smaller spoon. Nicely put the rice in there. Now remember what I told you, or I don't know if I mentioned it to you, you, you hold your spoon like a pencil, like so. It helps you to control. So even if you, see, it's not falling off because I can control it, okay? So no shaky hands, just, yes. Okay. So, so I'm going to pick out, the, that's why I have my thongs, I'm gonna pick out the liver. I think I should actually take this out first. Okay. Now, very lightly. So if you can use your fingers. Yeah, use your fingers. <laughs> okay, take the liver out. Okay. And then now I want to get the, um, the vegetables now, okay? On the side. More of the vegetables than the liver. Now again, like Chef Greg said, we're trying to go for height, okay? The higher this is, the better it looks to you, okay? Now, of course, you will have some things fall off from there. The idea is not to let it be too much or too messy, okay? And when that is done, you wipe it, okay? So I'm just going to take a sprig of parsley over here and just like, that's a very rooted one. is perfectly clean and tidy. Does this make sense? Yeah, now, does. before we even go any further, it's a simple, basic jollof rice. You can even go and buy it from the booker down the road and plate it nicely for your in-laws and say you cooked it. But it's the plating that the booker will not do for you. Look at how excellently that has been plated. We all want to eat. Okay. One thing you have to not run away from is using your fingers in the kitchen. You've washed your hands, they're clean. If you're going to do food that is plated like this, you will have to use your fingers. Okay? So press and remove. Okay. okay. No, hey, press at the same time. Go on, go on, go on, go on. Go on. You see, it, has even it, 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 it has kept its shape. You're good to go. What's next? What's next? Oh, no, no, not, not on the red. For you, I'll just take the red and put it on top. That alone just is okay. fine. Now your piece of steak. Awesome. So. So you put it right there. Go on. Then, your dressing. Your dressing. You want to do like a nice drizzle all around the plate. Put out. You do. You, you, yeah. you take over from her. Yeah. Like a nice drizzle all over the plate. Now remember your spoon action. You see? Oh uh no. -uh. Uh -uh. Now you you don't have that control because stop, you're not stop, holding stop, it the right stop. way. Thank you. Now you guys look at this. Tell me who will not want. To eat this now. Tell me. You have your steak, you have your salad, and not difficult to do at all. Yeah. Remember we talked about portion and portion control when you guys were plating your food. Everything is in sym symmetry with each other. Okay? Blood to, to uh, let me let me have that please. Thank you. Now you guys look at this. Tell me who will not want to eat this now. Tell me. 
you have your steak, you have your salad, and not difficult to do at all. Yeah. Remember we talked about portions and portion control when you guys were plating your food. Everything is in sym symmetry with each other. Okay? You've seen this, you have it in your brain, you have it in your mind. Let's take that piece of steak and cut it, and cut it in on the bias. We, we want a board for, what board are we going to use? What board are we going to use? Red. What board are we going to use? Red. What board are we going to use? Red. What board are we going to use? And he says red. What do we say about raw meat and cooked meat? Cannot be on the same board. So you want to look for this part of the meat because you're going to cut it against the... Against the grain, for lack of a better, a better word. Okay. So... You want to go in just like so. Look at the color Look at the meat. in there. I mean, it just makes you feel like wanting to eat. Okay. Like so, okay. So that's what I want. You want to go ahead and finish it up. Thank you. You're cutting straight, sir. She had hers I at, had it at, at an, an angle. angle. You have to... At an angle. And the way he, the, he's cutting it quite thin, so that way we judges don't have such a hard time chewing it. What other way could you cut the meat for presentation? Victor? Shred. You can also cut the meat and not let the bottom come off. So you can cut it and layer it so it's still and joined yeah. together like a fan. Okay, good stuff. So, let's go. Let's go, let's go, Chef Rene. Oh, okay. So now we're done with that. We want to try to, this is fine. Just like so. Just like so, because what we're looking for here is the contrast and the beauty. And you just... A little bit of drizzle on it. Drizzle on it. black pepper and yeah, come out. Oh, and yeah, voila. Okay, can we take everything away? Whatever we have not used, can we take away? Can I give this to you? 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 Guys, come on. Please tell me. If, if that does not look beautiful. Excellent. And think about it. You, you're actually part of what made it excellent like that. That's the reality. Thank you very much. You shall see an even more difficult time next week, where three of you might go home. Thank you. Thank you. Are here. And the flavor is three times meatier. Three times? Yes. Fuck. I can't wait to start cooking. Joyce, what special flavor do you put in your stew? And how come you're always having so many customers? It's the new no cube so no? the new no cube flavor is not three times meatier. Taste some. Mm, I think I'll have some more. Taste the no difference. Now with three times meatier flavor. Yeah, flavor. just got hotter. I told you, and now the bar has been raised way above the roof. And sadly, we've come to the end of yet another epic episode on Nor Taste Quest. What a show. But we hope though next week that our contestants can at least put today's lessons to good use. After all, it is Nor Taste Quest. And for those of us at home, you know with Nor, everyone is a winner. 
And that is why there are prizes to be won every week by the viewers. Just answer the weekly question correctly. And the numbers of last week's winners are on the screen right now. This week's question is... Which of these are co-sponsors of North Taste Quest Season 2? A. Ford Motors and Kenwood B. Costaris Motors and Kenwood C. BMW Motors and Kenwood You know the answer? Then hurry up! Send your answer in this unique format. Text RR, then your answer, if it's A, B or C, to the short code 33120. And we want to hear from you guys, so please like our Facebook page, send us your comments and your favorite recipes. We say a big thank you to our co-sponsors, Kuscharis Motos and Kenwood. So wonderfully dressed in your chef outfits, you guys made today's show truly epic. We say a big thank you to Dr. Robert, Chef Frags, and our second sous chef, Chef Rene. I'm your host, Manny, and I'll see you all same time next week on Nor Taste Quest. Goodbye.